This is a saddle that I designed. It's called the Cowboy. I developed back in the early 80s, and I developed it because of what I learned from the mule. What makes it a mule saddle? Okay, number one, I just showed you the bars. Extremely important. You don't want to have the bar fit from tip to tip. You're going to have pressure points tip to tip. Only place you really want to have consistent pressure is right where you sit. So right where I sit, that's going to help the animal to be comfortable. Then the rest of the weight, depending on how fat or how skinny, and folks, this is what I run into a lot, too fat of mules. They don't need to be out in the pasture, but you'll see me touch on that on another YouTube. Now look, in the back, this right here is the back of the saddle. Notice that this area right in here is not sewed together. You don't want to sew this area together and make it pretty. You want to keep this open so that the mule's spine does not bang against it. Notice on your mule, you'll see the spine coming back toward the seat area back in here, and you'll see three to maybe four bumps sticking up. They get that from their daddy the donkey. If you're sewed up in the back back here, that's going to put pressure up on that, and you are going to end up with what's called a fistula. Notice how this is open right here. This right here is taking the pressure off of that mule's back. Also, the back of my bar on my, on my pad, you can see how the back of the pad sticks up in the back here, again, to take pressure off of that spine. Very, very, very important, okay? So, the other thing is notice how this is curved. This is rounded off so that it doesn't put pressure upon the mule's hips. I rounded it off around in here, and then I rounded it off in the, in the front. Now, I am not taking putting pressure upon the scapula, and I'm not putting pressure on the hip. Now, here's the next thing that's very important. This back D-ring is the most important D-ring on the saddle. The rear cinch must be tighter on a mule, otherwise you'll end up with a saddle like this, and you're getting putting pressure up on that sixth and seventh rib. And as you're moving, you're creating a lot of pressure up on that sixth and seventh rib and that fat pocket and the scapula. No wonder you got white hairs here. No wonder your mule's shaking his head downhill. No wonder he's wanting to run downhill. No wonder he's wanting to run uphill. When you go downhill, this saddle goes forward and goes right into the animal's back. So where I placed my D-ring here is the sweet spot of that mule's back. This is the right place to be able to keep the cinch at the right place so it doesn't make him buck, so that it stabilizes this saddle right back here in the back like you want. Notice that when I sit in the seat, notice the front of that saddle automatically wants to come up. That's what you want. You don't want to have this thing cantilevering like this. Next thing you notice, on my cowboy saddle and on my trail, on my trail rider saddle and on my canyon riders, uh, and my Packers all have the double ring here. Four uh, seven eighths and three quarter. And it's not quite right exactly on the money. It's a little ways back from that. I actually kind of split it. I prefer to use seven eighths more than anything else. Works the best. Notice how my pummel it comes down here. This would be a full rig ring here. This is seven eighths. Then you got your three quarter. So having these two plates, the most important one is this one here. This one now is shorter in, in length. That way I can fit my mule nice and consistent. The rest of the saddle doesn't mean much to the mule, but it means something to you. On the cowboy, I have a five inch cantle and I'm going to a four inch cantle because a lot more folks are wanting, are having a hard time swinging their leg over. So I'm going to four inch cantle here 13 and a half inch pummel here. The 13 and a half inch pummel is going to help you lock your legs in. Going to help you to be able to, when the mule does go down the hill and stumbles or something like this, you'll be able to lock yourself into place. I have the rings on the back to help your britchins. Notice I said a britchin, not a crouper. Your crouper is designed for six to eight pounds. It's hooked to bone. There's no muscle mass. I've had just this last year, three people call me up, said, Steve, I've been riding with Coopers all of my life, and now all of a sudden, I just found out I broke the back of my mule. Listen, folks, that's just bone. They had to put their mules down. A lot of them had ridden for years with a Crooper, and now the day came. 
a steep mountain took it out. One of them, just a short little draw, took it out. So folks, think about your animals. This is where I attach <coughs> my, uh, my D-rings for my breaching. I have tie straps, six of them, three on each side. These are really easy to take loose and take out. You can, you can replace your strings with ease. Pull them right out and you're done. Otherwise, you gotta go to a saddle maker to cost you over $100 to replace all these strings. This way here, it's easy. And I want you to also notice, folks, I got tie rings here that you can tie your slicker to. Don't put a great big set of saddlebags back here. Your kidneys are back here. And as these saddlebags are banging around, they're banging on the kidneys, that's where you're going to end up with another problem. That's where you're going to end up with, a, with kidney failure. Watch your urine on these mules. The darker it gets, the worse you're in shape. So the saddle, the rest of the saddle is designed for you. This is where it started. I'm going to show you some of my other saddles in the future. But this is where you want to be able to, uh, if, you, if you're a working cowboy, or if you're a guy that just wants something simple, or if you're, if you're going to even show this saddle here is a good recommendation for you because this saddle is just all around saddles, not padded, mostly for guys. Most of the gals want, uh, want padded, most of the guys want unpadded. But let me tell you something, folks. Let me talk about this a little bit. If you've got a sore back, sore legs, it's not always the saddle. It's probably the way you're sitting in the saddle. Extremely important how you adjust your legs, how your legs are placed, and how you sit in a saddle. And also, it's very important also the type of, uh, of uh, pants that you use. Uh, the, a lot of these pants will put pressure in places that's not good. And so you also want to consider that. I had one of my clients, she was wearing this particular Levi all the time and it kept, she kept having back problems. Darn, she changed and went to a Wrangler jean and it fixed the problem. But she just happened to find that by accident. All right, folks, thank you very much. There's a little tidbit for you.